In this video, I'm going to talk about Ephesians chapter 5, verses 21 through 33, which is a beautiful and profound passage of scripture that I love. But unfortunately, there's a section of it that makes it sound like wives are supposed to be subordinate to their husbands. And so I think there's an interpretation problem there. And actually, that interpretation problem causes us to sometimes miss the beauty of this passage. So let's start by talking about that section where it seems like it's saying that wives are supposed to be subordinate to their husbands. And once we've cleared that up, then we'll be able to see the real meaning of this entire passage. So in verse 22, it says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. So when we use that word head in English, you know, for us, the word head can mean the physical head, but when we use it metaphorically, we often mean someone is the boss, the authority. So we say he's the head of the department, or, you know, we understand that the word head carries the word authority. Well, in Greek, that word head does not carry that same metaphorical meaning of authority. It's not used in that way in the Greek that was spoken at the time this was written. So we cannot put our English meaning of head, our metaphorical meaning into this. So do not read this as the um, head of the wife is the husband. It does not mean that the boss of the wife is the husband. Okay. So, well, if it doesn't mean that, then what does it mean? Well, in Greek, there is a way that that word head, kephale in Greek is used metaphorically. So in Greek at that time period, that word in Greek, kephale, most commonly just means head, like a physical head, but it sometimes carries the metaphorical meaning of source or origin, okay? So instead of understanding head as authority over, which we don't have that in the Greek, understand it as source or origin of, okay? And when you do that, this passage is going to just open up into a beautiful meaning that maybe you didn't see before. So, but what about this submission thing? I mean, it clearly says wives submit to your husbands. Well, we have to understand that the word submit does not mean, it can mean to submit, like to be, uh, you know, put yourself in a lower position, but it means to give over to the desires or will of another person. So it doesn't necessarily mean hierarchy. It just means that be willing to give up your own desires and will in order to allow the other person to have their will and desires. Okay, so it is saying to the wives, submit give over your, you know, what you would want, be willing to defer to your husband, to give honor to what he wants, okay? But it's not actually saying that exclusively to wives. Look how the passage starts out. I didn't start by reading verse 21. Verse 21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. This entire passage is about mutual submission to each other. It's not just about wives 
submitting to husbands, but also husbands submitting to wives. It is about our mutual submission to one another. And that's a constant theme throughout the New Testament. We hear honor one another above yourselves. So the idea is that in marriage, be willing to give over to the other person, defer to the other person, consider their ideas and their will as more important than your own. And if both parties do that, it eliminates a lot of problems in marriage, right? So it begins by talking about wives doing that for their husbands. And then it talks about how husbands can do that for their wives. And that's where we're going to uh, look and explain. But remember now, we're keeping in mind that when we see the word head, we're not thinking of it as authority, but as the source. And I'm just going to put the word source in there. So submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the source of the wife as Christ is the source of the church, his body of which he is the savior. Now, this is something incredibly profound. Now, how is the husband the source of the wife? Well, remember that Adam was put to sleep and out of Adam's body, God took a rib and he created Eve. So man is the source of woman. We, we are not separate beings. God, God took the man, it took the woman out of the man. So the, the man is the source of life for the woman. And in another passage in the New Testament, it also says, well, also now, you know, men are born of women, right? You can't be born into this world without a woman. So now woman is also the source of man. So there's a mutuality there. Woman was originally taken from man, but now man is also born of woman. So, um, so the husband is the source for the wife as Christ is the source of the church, his body. So remember that it is through Jesus's body, broken on the cross, dying on the cross for us, that the church is born. We have been born from the body of Christ and we have become the body of Christ. Now, as the church submits to Christ, right? We give ourselves over in deference to our Lord, to Christ. And so also wives should give over to uh, submit and have deference to their husbands in everything. And then it goes on, husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So just as it's asking wives to give over and give up for the husbands, it's also asking the husbands, husbands, Christ gave himself up for you, so you give yourself up for your wife. So this is mutual submission to each other. It is not, not a hierarchical situation between husbands and wives. It is a mutual submission. So it says, so Christ, he gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Now, this is something Christ has made us holy. Do you realize that we are holy and blameless because of Christ? Some Christians are reluctant to think of themselves as holy, but Christ gave himself up to cleanse you from your sins and to present you holy. You are holy because you've been made holy. You're not striving to become blameless. You are blameless because of Christ. You are without spot or wrinkle in his sight. 
So to present him to herself as a radiant church, to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless in the same way. Husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you However, each one of you must also love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. So this is talking about, look, this is not about subordination. Christ did not come to make you his subordinate. He came to make you his bride, his equal partner, his co-heir. We are co-heirs with Christ. This is saying the two will become one flesh. And he's saying that the, this for this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. And he says, hey, I'm not even talking about husbands and wives here. I'm actually talking about a more profound mystery, Christ and the church. So Christ has now, we have become one flesh with our Lord Jesus Christ. And just think about the beauty of the imagery of, you know, Adam and Eve, that God took Adam, he, he opened up Adam's side and took out the rib, formed Eve, and then the two became one flesh. Think about the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, he died on the cross and they even opened up his side, they pierced his side. and from that and and another imagery part of it is that god put adam to sleep when he did that and christ went to sleep his death was that sleep that brought forth the church that would be taken from his body and then united to him as one flesh this is such an incredible and beautiful passage. And so this is talking about the uniting of two people as one flesh, husbands and wives, one flesh, a partnership, co-heirs, and Christ and his church partnership, one flesh. And because of that beauty, that love between us, we give ourselves over just as Christ gave himself up for us, we now submit ourselves, Christ submitted himself to death in order to redeem us. Now we submit ourselves to our Lord, we submit ourselves to Christ, and we also submit ourselves to one another. And that's not just between husbands and wives. This is for the entire church. We are supposed to be honoring and deferring to one another above ourselves. So anyway, I love this passage of Ephesians and I do find it unfortunate for those who have been, you know, in the church for a long time and certain branches of the church that do teach the subordination of women that this verse can sometimes hold a much different this passage can hold a much different meaning to them. And I've heard this taught, you know, I, I have spent plenty of time in churches where there's a huge focus on women submit and, you know, the, the woman, basically the wife is in a subordinate position to the husband and the husband is considered the boss. And, you know, some people say, hey, that, that idea is great for our marriage, it helps us. But, you know, for many people, that idea has been destructive to their marriage. So I hope that it, this video has given you some things to think about so you can consider how you're interpreting this passage as it relates to women. And, um, and, and hopefully this brought out 
some of the real beauty and profound metaphors that are in this uh, passage. So God bless you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, then please subscribe to my channel. Thanks. His own self for heavenly food.